I'm gonna level with you guys. Ever since I heard about generative AI and saw what creative artificial intelligence is capable of, my motivations to do anything creative myself kind of went down to zero. I stopped drawing and sketching which used to be a huge part of my life and who I am as a person. I still do graphic design jobs when I'm being asked to do them, but I haven't done anything self-initiated, something for myself, you know what I mean? In the age of creative artificial intelligence I started to seriously question this purpose, which I used to think was just sort of, you know, given to me. I started to seriously question what is the point of creating? Hi you guys, welcome back to our channel which is all about art, design and creativity. My name is Laszlo and today, yeah, we're going to talk about artificial intelligence. We just have to, it's a design channel, we just have to talk about this, don't we? Now before we jump in, I just want to say I'm not here to tell you if you should or shouldn't use AI in your creative work. Instead what I'm trying to do is balance the argument a little bit. Because let's face it, while the internet seems to be overwhelmingly pro-AI, at the same time, I'm sure there are lots of people out there who are like me, are kind of going through a little bit of an identity crisis at the moment. I mean, in a world where people can just generate stuff, artwork and any creative work out of thin air with a touch of a button, I can't help but think, what's a guy like me gonna do in this new world? Because I'm not sure that I'm content with this idea that people like me, the artistically inclined ones, or role in society from now on is just to sit back and edit and tweak the mistakes that the machine is making when it comes to creative work. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to highlight three aspects of creative AI that we all need to be aware of, whether you are pro-AI or anti-AI or somewhere in between. Because well, let's face it, whether we like it or not, the creative industries are changing very rapidly. And we all need to know where exactly are we going from here, right? Now aspect number one, I'm just going to call autopilot mode. Now if you've been following our channel for a while, you might have remembered that I did talk about text-to-image AI programs when they came out last summer, you know, Dali 2, Midjourney and all that. They came out and spammed the internet with beautifully rendered, meaningless artworks of six and seven fingered, almost humans. Now a lot has happened since we made that video. Copyright issues have been raised, AI companies got sued for admittedly training their algorithms on real artists' works, a movement has begun. All in all, the general public got educated on how the guys at Silicon Valley who have made all this technology possible, they probably haven't done it with the best of intentions. Seemingly, morality prevailed and we won. Humanity triumphed against the machine and its capitalism fueled ideas. So yay, there was peace for about five minutes. Introducing ChatGPT. As you can see, OpenAI's latest service is a conversational AI which you can ask anything and it will write you back paragraphs about anything and everything under God's green earth. It can tell you how to change your car's battery step by step, it can write you essays about the Austro-Hungarian Empire, it can give you an outline for your next sci-fi novel, it can even write you a joke if you ask it to. So this time, the writing profession is getting the modernizing treatment. And if I'm honest, that is just the tip of the iceberg. Now there are AI programs that can help you edit video, make music, do voiceover, programming, book, social media, content creating, anything. We have reached a point where any part of any creative project could be outsourced to a machine. And of course, I do see the appeal. Expecting the most amount of results while putting in the least amount of effort into something is a very, very human trait after all, isn't it? I completely understand where this is coming from. We are cutting corners while also hoping that we're not gonna end up running in a circle, yeah? I mean, okay. You know what, don't get me wrong, my website is made with Squarespace too, which is the very same thing in principle, isn't it? I didn't know how to do something properly and I also didn't want to fork out the cash to hire a human web developer with the proper CSS and HTML skills, right? So I used a template based website building system instead, which cannot do nearly as good a job as a human being could with the proper skills and knowledge. Instead, I settled for something which is not perfect but you know, it's, it's, it's good enough. And that's the problem with all these generative AI softwares and technologies. They are not bad, and I can't say that the invention of them was a mistake, but they all have their limits, and they will always have their limits. I don't care what anyone says about the technology progressing over time. If something is lacking that human touch, it will always feel somewhat off to the very human audience. It will always feel that the work is, for a lack of a better word, soulless. 
Making things this way will always feel like we are running things on autopilot, which I think should never be more than a temporary solution to any creative problem. A temporary solution for good enough work because, because without a relatable message that only a human being can project, the work has little value. People write songs and paint pictures, make movies or write books because they want to tell you something about themselves. They want to contribute to the human experience. And through their work, us, the audience, we get to learn and experience something new about being human as well. Now, I truly believe that this is something that machines could never really understand or replicate. Of course, I understand that we are living in a capitalist society which expects a lot of work. Oftentimes, we are forcing ourselves to be creative on cue, to make more stuff quicker. But I feel like I must state that if you feel like you don't mind the machines doing most of the talking for you, then maybe, just maybe, you don't have anything that is important enough to say. If you don't want to pick up pen and paper to start the creative process, which is all you need to start, the rest you will figure out later, then maybe, maybe you're just not ready to create yet, which is fine. But please always keep it on mind. Running things on autopilot mode will only get you so far. Sooner or later you will have to take control over your message. Because that's the only way you'll, you'll get to where you want to be. You understand what I'm saying? Another thing that I think is widely misunderstood about generative AI is when you're using them, you're not using a tool, you're using a service. Now stay with me while I'll explain this. I see lots of debates going on comparing this current AI situation with the invention of smartphones with good cameras or Photoshop and how these tools evolved and disrupted their respective industries. This idea that AI is just a new tool in the toolbox for, you know, creative work. <sighs> no. And I can't believe that I have to say this out loud, but no, that's, that's not the same thing. Photoshop lets you digitally paint, but it's still you doing the painting. You're creating something from nothing, hence it's a tool. Microsoft Word or Google Docs have given you the ability to write digitally in a concise manner, so you don't have to worry about, you know, your typewriter messing up or your ugly handwriting skills. But it's still you doing the writing on an empty piece of pixelated canvas, yeah? Everything you create there is all on you, no one is holding your hand. Now, if the main body of work is not being created by you, you are just the mastermind behind the project, giving prompts and orders to someone else or something else to get the work done, then you are not using a tool. You are using a service. You are not the creator, you are the client. Okay? Saying that ChatGPT is a new tool for writing is a little bit like saying that ordering a pizza is a new tool for cooking or ordering a taxi is a new tool for driving. And again, I think the idea was right on paper. While it is only a service, it is a great service, just like how Wikipedia democratized human knowledge by providing a curated version of everything about everything in a concise manner. Now with AI we are trying to democratize human skills and human talent, which is, again, the idea is great, but the execution, eh, not so much. Just to keep at our example, Wikipedia is not driven by profit, it's completely free to use, it's completely free to edit, and most importantly, it also cites all the sources where the information has come from. Now show me an AI service that has this level of transparency. And I'm asking without a sense of irony, please, if it exists, show me. Because that could be something I can get behind. In its current state, you don't fully understand what you're doing with AI. Because it doesn't let you peek behind the curtains. You don't see the recipe, you just get the meal, yeah? You are not fully in control of your results. Just like you would be if you were using a tool. You are just at the receiving end of a service. Now I hope once you grasp this idea, you may be able to find some comfort in yourself and your skills and your creative work. Which leads me to my last point. Even the most enthusiastic futurists out there who are very pro-AI, they all know and they all admit it that these new AI services work best when a professional is using them. Meaning someone like Stephen King would get way better results out of ChatGPT than a 12 year old boy who's using it to try and cheat on his English homework. Now that is obviously because a professional writer understands the principles of creative writing, he would know the industry terms, and generally speaking sees and understands more of what the machine is trying to do. While the little boy who's cheating on his homework, he's just shooting in the dark, hoping to get out something that is good enough. Which is just, <laughs> it's not good. To keep at the analogy, if you give kids calculators too early, 
they will never understand the logic and the structure behind basic mathematical equations. Do you see where I'm going with all this? If you cheat your way through anything in life, taking shortcuts, instead of walking the walk and learning from your experiences and your mistakes, you might just end up ignoring the very thing that makes you human in the first place. Spoiler alert. It is your experience and your mistakes that makes you human. AI can only produce good results from good references. We all understand that, don't we? All these AI algorithms have to look at the best of the best in order to impress us. Otherwise, what was the point? So ChatGPT, for example, needs a proper editor in order to be useful. But of course, in order to be good at editing, you need to be really good at writing in the first place. In terms of AI art, Midjourney works better when a professional artist is generating the prompts, yeah? Which begs the conclusion, generative AI, it's all very, very impressive tech that nobody really asked for. The average person doesn't need this. It's a bit like giving a race car to someone who just doesn't have their driver's license yet. All of which is making me think that if you don't know how to do something without AI, maybe you just shouldn't do that thing in the first place. <gasps> which sounds like a very elitist, very discriminatory idea. I get that. But when you let the machine do the communicating, the thinking, and most importantly, the decision making for you, then you're not using the machine. What you're actually doing is you're letting the machine use you. Besides, the barrier of entry into any creative endeavor is, is not that high as people make it sound. As I said earlier, you just need some pen and paper and the willingness, of course, to learn something new as well. The internet at its current state, well, it's, it's full of free information you can learn from if you want to become a better writer, a better musician, a better artist, anything. Yes, it will take a long time to master your craft, of course. But at the end of the day, it's a very rewarding process. And not to mention, it's fun. Why is no one talking about this? Making things and learning how to make things is actually a lot of fun. Don't take that away from us. I mean, if you're not having fun creating, then maybe just do something else. It's that simple. Now, not gonna lie, I think the next couple of years, things might get tough for creatives. I think people for the foreseeable future will flood the internet with all this pseudo content, all this artificially generated low quality stuff. And I do see how you might find that deflating if you happen to be an art student at the moment, going through university or any art course. But yeah, I made this video because I just want you to know that I don't think you should drop out just yet because of all this that is going on right now. Stay the course and get through this storm, because either way, with or without AI, you will be able to bring more to the table than someone else who doesn't have the skills that you have. I do think we can come out the other side of this. Eventually the skies will clear out and the world will relearn to appreciate what you have to give to it. But you know, I don't know anymore. Maybe not. Well, that's all that I wanted to get off my chest. I hope any of this resonated with anyone. Give me a like or a comment if any of this resonated. Feel free to follow us and I will hope to catch you in another video sometime soon. Okay? Until then. Take care guys and just keep creating, okay? Just just do it for the fun of it. Okay? Bye.